Alright, what's going on guys? My name is Steve from the Checkpoint the Gaming Channel offering three straight days of X Games coverage and today we're going to be doing a recap of day two at the X Games Invitational. Just like yesterday's video, this will include players I noticed, the pace of the game, which players impressed me and my general feelings towards the match. So let's get straight into it. Optic Nation versus Strictly Business. Now, they were very level going into it, going back and forth, fighting predominantly in the middle map area on Strike Zone. Uh, Miracles was looking very strong in terms of slaying power, uh, as well as Fizzup on SB. Fizzup really impressed me this series, actually. Um, I've never really watched him before, but they were playing very impressively. And uh, both uh, Miracles and Fizz were probably the uh, centre points of all these matches. So uh, Optic, Gaming, uh, Optic Nation even took uh, Game 1. Uh, going into game 2, SND and Warhawk, both teams are playing quite cautiously, waiting for someone to make a move, and, um, you know, it was really, really interesting to see, um, Fizz, because I've heard a lot about his SND prowess, and, um, it looks like he used it successfully to take the first two rounds fairly comfortably. Uh, I believe Ricky pulled a round back, uh, after Miracles got outplayed by Fizz, so it was leaving the score 3-1 to SB. But SB pulled away again with a double digit search and destroy, search and destroy score from Fizzup and took the victory 6 1. Game 3 blitz on freight, fairly level at the start, but as John and Stainville turned up, so did the aggression. Adrenaline flowing. Round 1 goes to SB 10 6. SB dominate round 2. It's quite embarrassing actually. Um, there was just simply no communication between Nation, no real organisation. There was no like substance to their attack. So 20 10, SB double up for the victory. Uh, game 4, Domination on Sovereign. Very close for the majority actually. Um, Nation had the upper the upper hand for most of round 1, but um, the communication was very strong by SB. Made a comeback to take back round 1 with a 7 point lead, primarily through knowledge of the spawn system. Big players from Kill and Burr staged a small comeback, but ultimately SB took the series 3-1. to one. Stainville and Fizz were definitely my most valuable players on the, on the winning team. Uh, series 3 to 1, let's move on to Evil Geniuses versus Team Calibre. Now this series caught me so off guard, I couldn't believe what I was watching. I mean, because you hear of the dominance of Evil Geniuses, you hear of Crimbot just being absolutely incredible, you hear of Karma, double time world champion, you hear of you know, TP and AX, two of the best objective players, and it's just, I wasn't expecting this. So game 1, Dom on for it. EG have control early, very intimidating, manipulating the map in their favour, lots of spawn trapping, lots of big players in mid map. The majority of the map, uh, the match revolves around EG controlling a home flag and B. Uh, TK take the B flag with it, map control in the final minute, X and T people in very impressively. And uh, there was around a 20 point deficit for TK going into round 2. Now, um, TK started to pick up slaying power, reducing the deficit down over time, eventually taking a lead with 2 minutes to go. And building off adrenaline, they went all the way, playing the games defensively to take the second round. Very surprising. Now, uh, Evil Geniuses, Game 2 S&D, we all know how um, dominating they can be on that uh, that game type. And of course, they won. We have uh, AX playing very impressively, I, I noticed, and also TP uh, clutching it one round. It was just a, a very good uh, display from them, and that kind of got my faith back after the shock that was them losing the domination. So game three blitz on free. Now everyone will be talking about this match, I guarantee. Because this one really caught me off guard. Um TK got three caps within the first 40 seconds. And uh, they were just swarming the EG spawn. The adrenaline built up and TK were going off. Right, Sharp was leading the charge, just slaying and creating an incredible off offense for Calibre. Calibre going to round two, six points clear against the world champions with an absolutely phenomenal aggressive display. Tika just showed no, re no remorse, taking the match 18 to 5, shutting them down with such a sense of power and dominance, it just left me stunned. Incredible plays by Tika. Uh, game 4 on strike zone, back and forth, very level. Tika eventually gained map control, having impressive defense throughout the game. You know, amazing plays by Nezla and Apathy, they really stepped it up after being on the, uh, the back seat for Rest Sharp. Uh, as the fighting circulated around middle map, incredible players on TK's end gave TK the win against the most feared team in Call of Duty Gaming. Surprising everyone and handing EG the loss, sending them to face Strictly Business. So, Strictly Business versus Evil Geniuses. Game 1, Dom and Strength Zone. Very tight and close, although EG were playing much more tactically on the get-go. Uh, however, EG refound that fire they missed against TK to pull ahead at the end of round 1, and the domination carried into round 2, with EG controlling the match completely. The thing about EG is... 
that they can all slay. They have, they all have the ability to rack up kills. It doesn't matter if the claying, if the claying, the slaying went from Krim to Karma to TP to Aix. They showed no sign of slowing down, and that's what makes them one of the best teams, if not the best team. 181 to 125 was the final score. EG won comfortably. Game two, SD and Warhawk trading rounds back and forth. Surprisingly level, actually. I thought SB would be a uh, Slaughtered really by uh, by EG, but uh, round three had EG pulling ahead with Teep taking out Fizz. However, SB pulled one back with some smart plays from from Fizz, setting the cogs in motion. However, it went back to EG, making the series two and zero. Game three, Blitz on Freight, slow start by EG in the first round, but second round they take off. SB are hit with a huge de deficit as EG build up momentum to get the 3 0 and uh, EG are one of, the, uh, one of the teams who seem to perform better under pressure. I've noticed that with uh, Optic as well. Under pressure, they really step it up and uh, yeah, that's exactly what they did and that's exactly why they're world champions. So, Fizz Red vs Cursed Orange. Now, I don't know much about these two teams. I, I focus more on the um, the guys up top like Optic, Envy and, uh, and EG, um, but I wasn't really looking forward to this series, but it actually surprised me I quite enjoyed it so game one Dom and Octane very tight round just an all-out battle between red and orange the main stretch of Octane was just a massacre with the team trading back and forth as the score remained very close throughout the game however towards the end Kers Orange began to pull away ending the match 100, 148 to 136 uh, going into game two S&D and Warhawk and Miyagi really impressed me this match he made a lot of smart plays Thinking on the fly, when and what, when not to engage and create a gunfight. Chaos Orange were just looking very good, and Fizz just seemed disorganised and broken up all over the map. Attach also went flawless. Let's not forget that. Going 12 and 0, absolutely phenomenal play by him, uh, taking the series up to 2 and 0. Game three, Blitz on three. Now Chaos Orange just seemed unbreakable. Fizz were struggling to find a way to dis disassemble their players and they were really finding it hard to score. Attach and Miyagi were undoubtedly the players of the series, taking advantage of Fizz's inability to string anything together but Fizz began to pick up a couple of captures towards the end of round one but Kess were just all over their base, just sliding caps in to end the round 8 and 2. Fizz began to pick up some captures heading into round 2 but Kess Orange did very very well to narrowly take the win and a 3 and a series overall. I didn't think I'd enjoy this series, but I did, so there you go. Now, Optic Gaming versus Team Envy. Game 1, Domination and Octane. Envy were very disorganised throughout. I was quite surprised because um, they're normally quite a, a, an organised team and look very uh, substantial in their plays, but uh, Optic's communication is on point. Uh, Parasite, he needed to slay. He needed to step up, step up and slay mid-map, but he just couldn't do it. Merc was also disappointing, which you'd think he, w he wouldn't be, considering he's playing against his old team and they had, there's a bit of a saltiness between the two. Uh, Clearst had some very good long shots using the assault rifle, lots of map control and optics, and gave the victory by a substantial 30 point lead. Uh, game 2, SD on free. Now, very aggressive players from both teams, using snipers to advantage. Uh, Optic looked very nervy in places, and I almost, I almost thought they were going to lose that fire they had going into game 1, but uh, they pulled away, taking out Merc for the final kill cam. Uh, you know, they look nervy, but otherwise very good plays from Optic, very smart, I liked what I saw. Now, um, Game 3, Blitz on Octane. I remember this one being uh, quite quite odd for me. It seemed like um, Envy stepped it up quite a bit substantially. I don't know what that was, but it seemed like they just pulled away a little bit. Um, I think it was, I, it was pretty close for the most part, but um, eventually uh, Envy pulled away, taking that map on uh, Octane. So, you know, that's just to be uh, just to be expected. Envy are a very good team. I didn't expect them to be 3 0 but there we go. Uh, game 4, Dom on Strike Zone. Amazing comeback. Reasserting map control uh, because um, Strike Zone is very, very hectic. And they were down. Once you're down on that map, it's very hard to get control back. So the reasserted map control is a result of some great slaying from Scump, from Scump, and there was some very objective play by by Clearsty. He, he really impressed me there. So um, slaying was the main factor there, and uh, I also want to bring up something else. So many people think that Envy threw the game so they'd get an easier match going into the next couple of rounds for the medals. So um, Envy will now be playing TK, and I'm not sure if it'd be easier for uh, Envy to play, well sorry, Envy would be going on to play Kess, Orange and TK. Um, many people think that 
Envy would have thrown the games because they believe it would be easier to play Chaos Orange and then TK rather than just playing Evil Geniuses. Now I'm not going to comment on this but that's just something to put out there ending the series 3-1. to one. So Team Envy versus Chaos Orange. Now like most games in Ghost nowadays, these matches centred around Ghost's broken spawn system. In the final seconds of Sovereign Domination, Orange were up by a slight lead, possibly enough to give them the win, and then Mate got the God Spawn blessed upon him and managed to pop up, uh, up, pop up in a miracle spawn across the map, giving Envy a free flag and securing victory for Envy. Envy went on to carry on some of that hype over into the S&D, winning that match 6-2 in a game that looked rather comfortable for them. Followed by a 7-3 win on Warhawk s and Now, um, uh, Warhawk Blitz, sorry. Now, obviously, Envy are a very good team, but spawns play a huge role in any game type, and there's a huge chance that if Merc didn't get the Miracle Spawn, Chaos would have had a chance of getting the upset. So that series was 3-0. Day 3, Championship Sunday games. We've got Optic Gaming versus Evil Geniuses. I uh, just give my opinion on a couple of these matches. I think EG will pull off the victory. I just don't see their run ending despite Optic's impressive performance against Envy and EG's disappointment against TK. Then again, I wasn't expecting TK to step it up so well. And uh, yeah, there's been a lot of surprises this uh, this tournament. So Team Caliber vs Envy will also be played. Um, I really think Envy will step up to the mark unless Sharp can lead the charge like he did yesterday. Sharp really impressed me and if he can do that against Envy just like he did against the World Champions uh, Evil Geniuses then they should stand a really good chance but I think Envy will step it up. Alright so that's my uh, views on day 2. If you enjoyed this episode then please leave it a like and tune in tomorrow for the next episode which will be the final one for Championship Sunday. My name is Steve and I will see you in the next video.